Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 30th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 104 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Now among the cultural left. The uber progressives in the media. Guess what? It's not Roseanne who did it. It's Trump who did it. So immediately after Roseanne was fired or her show was canceled, to be more precise, Valerie Jarrett was doing a town hall, if you can believe it, hosted by the non-Reverend Al Sharpton. So there's Reverend Al, the non-Reverend Al. By the way, the biggest anti-Semite you'll find on the planet, him and Louis Farrakhan, a Jew hater to the core, a white hater to the core. You want to talk about a racist bigot, it's the non-Reverend Al. But let that go. He was hosting a, a town hall on, quote, everyday racism in America. And, of course, there's good old Valerie. So there's Valerie. And she's asked, well, you know, Roseanne, the show's been canceled. She's been fired. What do you make of it? Look how they use that old Obama adage uh, popularized by Rom Deadfish Emanuel. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Always use a crisis to advance the agenda of the radical left. Listen to her. A, turn it into a big racism issue. And B... Blame Trump. Roll it, Brittany. Well, first of all, I think we have to turn it into a teaching moment. Mm. I'm fine. I'm worried about all the people out there who don't have a circle of friends and followers who come right to their defense. The person who's walking down the street minding their own business and they see somebody cling to their purse or want to cross the street. Or every black parent I know who has a boy who has to sit down and have a conversation. The talk, as we call it. And those, as you say, those ordinary... Um, examples of racism that happen every single day every day and i think that's why i'm so glad to be here this evening talking with all of you hey there i'm chris hayes from msnbc thanks for watching msnbc okay i think that was the wrong clip there Brittany, but that's okay um all right so number one it's we'll notice it's always mississippi burning it's always mississippi burning have you noticed that it's always people running across the street. They're clutching their purses every day. Oh, my God, the racism. It just, it just doesn't end. It just doesn't end. Hey, it's Mississippi 1964. It's always going to be Mississippi 1964. And I'm listening to this, and I'm thinking, this is incredible. No, really, it's incredible. Here you have a racist black host, an ultra-liberal black host, Al Sharpton, who's making millions, by the way, he's been shaking down people for years, making millions. Now he's been making millions off of MSNBC. You have the, the America is the only white majority country in the world to have elected a black person as president. Racist. Valerie Jarrett, promoted to the highest echelons of power. Racist. Susan Rice. Racist. I, mean, I could run down the whole freaking list. Racist, racist, racist. It's always racist. I got news for you, Valerie. I walk down the street. People cross it all the time. I don't go around saying they're racist. I walk down the street. People are clutching their purses. I don't claim racism. I don't know why they're clutching the purse. I don't care why they're clutching the purse. I got a life. I move on. Okay? I don't play the victim card nonstop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, like you do. That's number one. Number two... And this is the bigger point. Do we have the cut of her saying the leadership starts from the top? We don't have that cut. Okay. Basically, what she said was not just that it's a teaching moment, but she says that everything starts from the top. Her words. And so when Roseanne traffics in racism, it's because the president is trafficking in racism. And she says that we have to hold our government and our president accountable. And we need to start pushing back against this president because this president is a racist president. So you see, Roseanne Barr is racist. 
because Donald Trump is racist. Donald Trump is racist because middle America that elected him is racist. Again, you're deplorables. I'm a deplorable. It always goes back to that fundamental line of attack, which, by the way, just to be technical about it, is the most racist thing you could possibly say. This is what I find incredible. The only racists are the liberals and the left. Like, I'm, I'm laughing at this. So they're calling white people, especially white conservatives, middle working class people, intrinsically, irredeemably racist, sexist, bigoted, Islamophobic, homophobic, xenophobic, hell. Come on, let's be honest. Nazi scum. Hitler. Okay, we're all Hitler. We're all Hitler. That's not racist. It's just unbelievable. The only racists are them. But that line of attack that first was uh, was articulated or espoused by Valerie Jarrett Boom. That picked up everywhere. You can tell they were coordinated. They were ready to get their talking points out. So Valerie Jarrett blames President Trump. Now, listen to Don Black Hole Lemon. This time he wasn't seeing black holes. No, 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 no. This time, Donnie was seeing racism everywhere. Roseanne traffic's in it. Trump traffic's in it. Trump supporters, you're just a bunch of bigots. Roll it, Brittany. You can't say they understand us or they get us mm -hmm. and then now want to be completely divorced from it. You can't say... That was big volumes. Of, yeah, and he, was, he very likely could. I mean, yeah. and, and you can't say there are fine people on both sides. You cannot say racist things, uh, encourage people to, uh, to get punched at your rallies. But Don, you, you can. cannot do. You can, though. You can't, he did. You can, that's and what he I'm does. Saying, but you cannot say that. I'm things. talking about the folks who are yeah, saying yeah, yeah. Uh, this has nothing okay. to do with the president. You cannot say that and then have him say and do and exhibit all the behaviors that he exhibits and then all of a sudden you want to be disconnect from it. It doesn't work that way. Logic does not work that way. This is, again, the normalization of conspiracy theories and racism. And we cannot allow that to happen. It will hurt. It is hurting the fabric of American society. People who are racist don't know they're racist. Or they say that they believe that, that people are going to believe that they're not racist simply because they say it is. I think we need a crash course in exactly what racism is. And again, this president is trafficking in it just as Roseanne did. You see? Now, I want you to think about how chilling that is. This is this, I'm telling you, this is going to have very profound repercussions if we don't stop it. He's saying that you're a racist. I'm a racist. Britney's a racist. Jared's a... We're all racists. But we don't know we're racists. See, we don't understand that we're racists. We need to be educated into understanding that we're just a bunch of racists. Now, I'm telling you, as a student of history, look at communism. Look at Marxism. Look at the Soviet Union. Look at Mao's China. Look at North Korea. Look at communist Cuba. Look at Venezuela. Look at Hitler's Germany. Hitler was a man of the left, not of the right. That's the biggest myth of our time, okay? But let all that go. People had to be put into re-education camps, or they had to be reprogrammed, or brainwashed, or in constantly indoctrinated. Because you don't understand, you may think you're a good, decent person, but you're not a good, decent person. And we have to show you how to make you a good, decent person. So... It doesn't matter. Don Lemon says you're a bunch of racists because you voted for Donald Trump. Now, you may have black members in your family or minorities. You may be married to minorities. You may have minority children. You may help minorities. You whatever. You may hire minorities. Your best friends may be minorities. It doesn't matter. You don't even know yourself that you're racist. Do you understand that? And they're there to educate you and to reprogram you, and to indoctrinate and brainwash you. That's what they're laying the groundwork for. So they're basically saying is, it doesn't matter if there's objective evidence. You're racist, okay? Just accept that you're racist. Now, Roseanne Barr is a racist, ipso facto, I don't know how he gets to this, but Trump is a racist, ipso facto, everybody who voted for him is a racist. We're all trafficking in racism. Now, Van Jones, he picked up that point. 
Listen to Van Jones. Now, by the way, so that you know, he wasn't just Obama's former green job czar. Van Jones, for many years, was a member of the American Communist Party. He's an outright communist. He defended and glorifies a system of government, totalitarian government, responsible for the mass murder of a hundred million people. Death camps, gulags, tortures, uh, imprisonment, that's what he supported. He has no moral legitimacy to criticize anybody about anything, but it doesn't matter. Roseanne Barr is a descendant of the KKK. Donald Trump is a descendant of the KKK. And all of you are descendants of the KKK. Listen now to Van Jones. Not Roseanne Barr to blame. Donald Trump is to blame for that tweet. Roll it, Brittany. The consequences for racism in America, I think you're starting to see now, whether it's Starbucks and, and what they did today, trying to, to, to be on the, the, the better side of these conversations, or ABC Disney, it could be that this moral collapse uh, inside of our political system, and especially uh, inside the White House, is being counterbalanced now. Uh, by people uh, you know, in mainstream media, mainstream corporations, who say, listen, we don't want to live in a country where, you know, good and decent people can be attacked for no reason uh, with, with despicable terms. And it's very important to know it's not a joke. It's not funny. The, the, the dehumanization of people of color, calling us animals, referring to us as apes and animals, uh, that has a history of leading to all kinds of violence, a, a justify, justifying exclusion. Uh, from, from, from businesses, from, from universities. This is a part of a long and nasty history. And apparently ABC Disney doesn't want it to be a part of our future. And I'm glad. And apparently in some places in America, some things are more important than money. And I'm glad. See, notice now how they love corporations. You see the change in the left? Now they love politically correct corporations. Now they love Starbucks. Now they love Disney. Now they love, I guess, what, AOL, Time Warner, whatever. Now they love big, uh, big business because now big business works on their interests. Big business now works on their behalf. So I want you to think about it. The very same leftists who for decades, it's like what Orwell predicted in 1984, down the memory hole. They say one thing one day, they will literally do 180 degrees the next, and the brainwashed population must accept it. The 99% versus the 1%. No, 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 no. The 1% is now good. The 1% like Disney and Starbucks and others, that's, quote, mainstream corporations. They're good because they're for open borders. They're for unlimited immigration. They're for political correctness. They're for affirmative action. You see, now they told the politically correct line. Now they serve their democratic overlords. See, now they're part of the censorship business. That now is what they've got corporate America now doing left wing censorship. Now they're good. Now it's the hell with the 99%. The 1% is now good. So the question then becomes what about Joy Reid? Whatever happened to Joy Reid? Well, I want you to listen to this coming up next. You got to hear this. Now, the regime has gone into Orwellian overdrive. Joy Reid is now an expert on who should be fired for making comments on social media. Joy Reid is now to stand the judge, jury, and executioner of Roseanne Barr's career. Joy Reid is asked to pass judgment on Roseanne Barr. That story, your calls, next. 123 here on the great WRKO. Okay, join Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. Okay, Joy Reid has a weekend show on MS Left BC. She was caught red-handed having a blog years ago which said the most despicable, vile, blatantly 
homophobic things imaginable. You should be disgusted if you see two men having sex, according to Joy Reid. That the African-American community, since when did she speak for the whole black community, but let that go, is right to be utterly revolted at the sight of two men holding hands, kissing each other, having sex, whatever. It was homophobic slur, homophobic blog posting, homophobic attack after another. She lied. She claimed that somebody had hacked her account and put those blogs up to try to discredit her. They even called in the FBI to supposedly investigate. Guess what? It was nothing more than a delaying tactic, a stalling tactic, because guess what? Well, okay, it wasn't hacked. Those were her comments. So she, yeah, she did it. But then she said, okay, but I was a different person then. I'm not the same person now that I was then. So not only did she engage in blatant homophobia that if a conservative had engaged in, gone. I mean gone. Out. Okay? Faster even than Roseanne Barr. She lied about it. And she lied about it repeatedly and concocted a fake hacking story and even had the FBI investigate on top of it all, using up their precious resources. But this is now rich. You want to talk about Orwellian? Now, the very same woman, guilty of thought crimes, okay, guilty of homophobia, on a level much worse than Roseanne Barr's tweet, not even close, is asked by Andrea Mitchell, another rabid Trump hater, what does it take to get you fired on social media? What did Roseanne Barr do that was so wrong? Please, Joy, educate all of us on why you stand in judgment of Roseanne Barr. Ro ay, ay, ay. Roll it, Brittany. Uh, I mean, what do you have to do on social media to get fired from a top-rated show on an, on an American broadcast network? Well, I mean, in the apology, I think the end her looks part is the part that stands mm. out to me because mm. essentially Roseanne is admitting that the Planet of the Apes part of that joke it was not about her politics, it was about her appearance and mm. the sort of bestializing of black people. Look, we saw people making gorilla and ape jokes about Michelle Obama. Mm. Yeah, that's what, no, what Roseanne Barr should have said, come on, Joy, come on now, gotta be candid. She should have said somebody hacked my account. No, no, somebody hacked. That wasn't me. Somebody hacked into my account. We're, I'm calling the FBI. We're going to investigate. We're all investigating. Then let several weeks or months go by, say, okay, uh, uh, it was me. Okay, sorry. But I'm not the same person now that I was then. I, I, I can't, re I don't remember. She said, she, literally, Joy Reid said this. I don't remember doing those blogs. I don't remember writing those things. She should have said the same thing. I don't, rem I, I don't remember. I don't, that's not me. That's just not me. And then she would have skated like you skated, Joy Reid. That's how you do it. No. She voted for Trump. She's gone. You hate Trump. You can keep your job. That's the truth, and everybody knows it. Arthur in Chestnut Hill, you're up next. Go ahead, Arthur. You know, you know <clears throat> I'll, t I'll tell you this. Uh, to, be to begin with... Uh had they not canceled her show, I bet if they put a show on after that, she probably would have got really the highest ratings of any show she ever had. Uh, the, the, fact of the, the fact of the matter is, is the other side can say whatever they want, and we know that, Jeff. So the only way we're ever going to get a fair, a fair hearing on, uh, on, uh, for people in this country and for Americans again is for us to get rid of this gang of seven media that, that, that are spilling hate and un-American uh, uh, propaganda day after day, night after, night after night. When Representative Hank Johnson from uh, Georgia, uh, the, 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 the claim to fame of uh, Guam is going to tip over if the Marines move the base there, <laughs> called, is, they called Israelis termites, okay? And, and he apologized. For the last, uh, since Obama became president, We've heard so many black professors in colleges all over the place tweet and put on their, on their Facebook page 
anti-white uh, stuff like, so vile it doesn't make a difference. And when the universities are called upon it, well, we don't agree with it, but uh, they can still keep their job. It goes on and on. And, and by the way, everything that when people you know accuse you of what they're doing, that's rule number one in the Sololinsky playbook. Look in the mirror and accuse the other guy of exactly what you do. And they and and you know Trump, Trump uh, uh, Hillary and uh, and Obama and Valerie Jarrett, uh, you know, are, are big followers of Saul Alinsky. But uh, you know, until until uh, you know, we we get control of our media, of the media again, we get control of the kind of the universities. This kind of uh, double standard is is going to continue. And if we don't do something about it soon, they're going to control. They're going to take over, and they've got a good fo- foothold in that so far. Because all we do is talk about it. We don't do anything about it. Arthur, I've only got 30 seconds before the news break, but I want to ask you this. And in a way, I want to put you on the spot because I respect you. If you were the CEO of Disney, just for the sake of argument, you're Bob Iger. But it's not Bob Iger, it's Arthur Iger. Okay, just for the sake of argument. Roseanne Barr makes her despicable tweet. What would you have done? What would you do? Well, what, what I would have done is it, uh, issued apologies immediately, okay? And, uh, and, and, and as a businessman, one thing uh, I don't want to do is cut my nose off to spite my face. And given the climate of racism, you know, from the other side, like they directed towards us, I would turn around and do what they do, just like they treated uh, uh, Joy Reid. Uh, you know, I turned around and she apologized and she took Ambien. Don't forget, uh, Representative Kennedy, you know, took Ambien the night he crashed his car into, uh, in, into the State House, uh, into the Congress, and, and blamed it on Ambien. So, I mean, uh, I mean, sometimes people make a mistake, but you know what? They're allowed to apologize, but we can't. Arthur, thank you very much for that call. God bless you, buddy. 617-266-6868. Okay. I'm going to take nothing but your calls after this news break. If you want to call now, 617-266-6868. President Trump says some big drug, uh, some big drug companies will soon make news about drug prices. Hallelujah. Evan Hed- uh, Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. He's got all those details. What are they, Evan? 136 here on the great WRKO. Okay, coming up at 205. You don't want to miss it. Stunning. I mean stunning comments from Chief Spreading Bull, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Will this damage her in the November election? We'll discuss that. First, though, I want to hear from you about Roseanne Barr, 617-266-6868. You can also text us, WRKO, so we know it's for us, whatever your message is, to 7470, 70470. Some really good texts. Uh, This is from 857. Jeff. Liberal Fascism 101. Colin Krapernick must, in caps, be hired, even if he's one-dimensional and sucks. But Roseanne must be fired and lynched, for her opinion, despite her show being wildly successful. In fact, uh, 857, her show was the most successful show on broadcast television. Number one. It was the most popular show on TV. Certainly the most popular show on ABC. No question about it. Um, This is from 978. Jeff, whatever happened to a company apologizing and stating that one person's comment doesn't speak for the company, its members, doesn't represent the opinions of management and its staff? No, I know. Today, if you're a conservative... (laughs) <laughs> you say one thing, and it's an excuse to fire you. If you're a liberal, you got a job for life. Russ in Boston, you're up next. Go ahead, Russ. Jeff, there's no question. The double standard has been alive and well for several decades. It, you know, it is sickening. There's no question Trump is a patriot. He's trying to do the right thing. And all these people want to do is try to bring them down. And it's really aggravating. And when you think about it, okay, now, you call them what you want. Call them Marxist. Call them... Uh, 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 Socialists, uh, progressives, moonbats. Yes. Right. Now, what they all have in common, okay, with these, with the, these people that, that tag this, 
is is that every one of them want to stifle the people's First Amendment rights. That's how they try to put down the opposition. And that's why we should never stand for it. Political correctness is just, it's really a joke. And Jeff, you have to remember one thing, that only people that are truthfully offended that anything that anyone does or says are people with low self-esteem. And these people that are going ahead and using this argument, they have a lot of self-esteem because they wouldn't be in the positions that they are if they were low self-esteem. And that's why the whole thing is nothing but a hypocrisy. Russ, thank you very much for that call. Very well said. 617-266-6868. Greg in Malden. You're up next. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Jeff. Big fan of the show. Uh, one of the few millennial conservatives out there. Uh, Greg, welcome, yeah. my friend. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I have called before, but uh, you know, I have used different names to kind of just... You know, uh, your IQ, your IQ's got to be, Greg, for you to be a millennial and to be a conservative, your IQ's minimum 140. N no, no, I, no, no, one, I, I mean, no 150 idea. and it above is, is honestly, Einstein genius, but you got to be minimum 140, my friend. I have to give the credit to my old man because I, I came out of the, you know, uh, colleges with the liberal ideologue and it was him who sat me down and showed me the difference between you know, fact and propaganda and statistic and, you know, playing on emotion. Um, but the reason I called is because I'm kind of objectively sitting back and, and looking at all this, and I, I kind of see it all tied in together. You know, the instant firing of Roseanne, the um, staunch connection between prominent Democrats and, you know, known uh, racists and supremacists such as Louis Farrakhan, George Soros, um, all these that you've mentioned before, um, in my opinion, it's we first have to acknowledge uh, that there is a growing divide. But the divide is not anything to do with race. It's a divide between those who want to see the country essentially divided and the rest of us who are live and let live kind of people. Um, and... I feel that, you know, it's it's evident kind of everywhere we go. You know, you see it in streets where they would rather give citizens Narcan than, you know, deal with dealers. Um, you know, you see it in schools where they teach everybody we're all the same because, you know, they're threatened by what makes us unique. You know, you, you see it all kind of, uh, all, all these kinds of, uh, you know, obvious depictions of it you know the blatant double standard everything it's i feel like it's all part of um you know obviously some bigger issue but you know i don't know if globalization is that you know bigger issue greg where... you, you put your finger right on it uh, what i tell you 140 iq minimum what i tell you Glo it's all part of globalism what they want to do is they want to create a homogenous society they want to smash all distinctions all differences. They want to destroy all standards. They want to destroy our Constitution. They want to destroy our Bill of Rights. They want to destroy our, destroy our unique national and cultural identity, what makes America and Americans distinct and unique in the world. And what they want to do ultimately, Greg, is they want to silence us. They want to beat us down. They want to cower us. And Greg, look, you're obviously a very smart man. I'm being serious. You're obviously a very intelligent young man. I just object. You know, you said the word objectively. Let's just stand back objectively. Okay. I've known racists in my life. I really have. I've known black racists. I've known white racists. I've known Latino racists. You know what I, you know what I notice about every racist? They're always racist. They can't shut up. They're racist in the morning, they're racist in the afternoon, they're racist at night, they're racist every day, every week, every month. It's part of who they are. A racist is not one bad tweet. A racist is not one comment, twisted, manipulated, taken out of context. You're so, absolutely correct. And, and Greg, and I want you to think about this. What are you and I, what are we all talking about right now? An actress who has a long career, whatever you think about her, who made one despicable, whatever call it, racist tweet. This woman is being destroyed over one sentence. One sentence. Not a book. Not 
5, 10, 15, 20 years of a systematic pattern of, let's say, I don't know, a hatred against blacks. When she was a liberal Democrat, they loved her. So when she voted for Obama, they loved her. So when she was a big Obama supporter, she wasn't a racist then, Greg. But then, like, much of the country said, hey, I've, I've had it with liberalism. I'm going with Trump in 2016. And she gets a show that sympathizes with him. Suddenly then, one tweet, she's finished. I How does I one tweet destroy? I mean, think of the totalitarian nature of our society. One word, Greg. One sentence. One tweet. And everything you've built and worked for, gone and destroyed. How Absolutely. is that freedom? Greg, it's honestly, nice. how is that freedom? It's not at all, and you've said it uh, numerous times. It's this age of, of thought police. It's this age of, you know, everyone's offended by everything. You, you can't, you know, you got to walk on eggshells, essentially, everywhere you go. Um, and back to the kind of globalization we were just uh, talking about, I don't know if it's, you know, all these political elites, the media, um, all them, you know, in cohorts together. I don't know if that's... You know, their dividing of the country is essentially the ends justifying the means. You know, we want open borders. We want globalization. We, we want this new, you know, new world order. But to get there, we have to completely tear this country down. We Bingo. have to split it in two. Bingo. Greg, I'm telling you, minimum 140. You got a high IQ, my friend. Y your mom and dad should be very proud. 617-266-6868. More with your calls. Next. 149 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Kooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. All right. Uh, you know what? A really interesting text. And I want to read it to you because I got to tell you, when I first read the tweet and the controversy about Roseanne Barr yesterday morning. I didn't think racism off the, you know, I didn't think, oh my God, it's a racist comment. I actually thought initially it's what this texter is pointing out because I've seen the movie Planet of the Apes. Okay, I like it. I, I saw the original with Charlton Heston. I've seen the remake and I've seen, it's been like a series. It's like, Jared, you would know this. How many of them now? Three, three of them, I think. Okay, Jared just walked up. Anyway, basically, three of them. I think they've made three of them, okay? And I got to say, they're actually very entertaining. I, I like them, okay? I've seen them uh, in the movies. I like them. I like one. I like two. I like three. I liked all of them. Listen to this text. Uh, again, 781. Jeff, in the actual movie, Planet of the Apes, the gorillas were the ruling class. The serfs were the apes and chimpanzees who weren't allowed to look up when spoken to. And the slaves on the planet were the white people who were also mute. That's what I thought Roseanne was making a reference to. You know, I got to tell you, honestly, 781, when I first saw the tweet, I'm thinking, here's what I thought. I thought Muslim Brotherhood, Planet of the Apes, right, equals Valerie Jarrett. I thought, yeah, Muslim Brotherhood, because she's got deep ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. Planet of the Apes, the ruling class. The apes, the gorillas, who run that society. And everybody else is a slave. And in particular, what's very poignant is, all the white people are viewed as slaves, in particular. So, when I, I honestly thought she was making a political or an ideological point. But then when I saw the immense reaction, I said, oh, Planet of the Apes. Oh, she's a descendant or whatever. She looks like a, what the implication is, a gorilla or an ape. Oh, and then they just pounced. And they drove that racist narrative throughout. Now, Roseanne Barr apologized. The moment she apologized, that was blood in the water. And then they went in for the kill. But I got to be honest with you, if you actually see the movie, whether it's the original or the remake, they're both great, by the way. It's about a society where apes, gorillas, in other words, stupid, people who are stupid, who are thugs, impose a dictatorship and a ruling class in which humans, and in particular white people, are essentially turned into serfs and slaves. And it's a warning 
that this could happen in the age of communism, in the age of fascism. This could happen to any society, especially America. When I first saw the comment, I honestly did not see race. I saw politics and ideology. But everything now is race. 617-266-6868. Bill in Newton. You're up next. Go ahead, Bill. Jeff, how you doing? Hi. Hey, I think you especially could do us all a public service. Never, ever, ever again refer to President Obama as a black man. He's obviously biracial, and I don't know why intellectuals can't, can't bring themselves to uh, call him biracial. He can call himself black, that's fine with me. But he's biracial. He throws his mother under the bus by referring to himself as black. His wife, Michelle, is obviously mixed race. Number two, Valerie Jarrett at least is biracial, and I'm, I, I'm not... If I'm not mistaken, it's her grandfather who was a, a black man. So she's either three-quarter white or between three-quarter white and one-half white. So how can she be referred to herself or other people refer to herself to her as black? I, I just can't understand why and, and intellectuals can't make that distinction. In our English language, at least American English idiom, intellectuals never use the term mixed race. There is so all you have to do is walk down the street in any major city and look at skin color and features, and you notice that most people, quote unquote, who are called are called black, obviously have white ancestry. But no one can bring themselves to say mixed race. If you if you go to Brazil for crying out loud, they'd laugh at you if you uh, didn't make the distinction. Bill, I got to tell you, you're right. You, you're right. Um, you're right. Uh, look. Obama is, what do you want to call him, multiracial, mixed race, biracial, you know, whatever you want to call him. Uh, you're a thousand percent correct. You are. Um, you're also right about, look, in Canada, where I originally was born and was raised, right, came from, people are, and it's not an insult. It's just, uh, you know, recognition of reality. It's, oh, that person's biracial. Oh, that person's multiracial. That person's of mixed race or whatever. In England, in Ireland, in Scotland, in Australia, in New Zealand, in France, in Germany, people routinely say, you know, we're mixed race. America is actually a multiracial society. And I don't just mean we have different races. Increasingly, there's interracial marriage. So we are becoming more and more less, or I should say less and less racially homogenous. And notice, you're right, the media, and I guess in this sense I'm a little bit guilty of it, and I'm going to try to change, the media still tries to categorize everybody as either only black, or only white, or only Latino, or only Asian, or whatever, when the reality is much more complicated and much more complex. Now, if you're going to argue, as the left now is arguing, which I think is an insane position, it's in fact a bigoted racist position, that whites are inherently racist. Well, if you're Obama, well, really, I'm serious, and your mother's white and your father's black, which means you're half white, half black, so is he half a racist? I mean, I could just go on and give you example after example. Look at now the intellectual gymnastics. They have to play to try to ram through their radical left-wing agenda. In the end, this is all going to collapse. The question is, how much damage will they do before it does collapse? Uh, Charlotte in Boston. Thank you for holding Charlotte, and welcome. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Let me reassure everyone who actually is a racist, or thinks they might be a racist, that it's not their fault. Obama said so. He said, and I quote, Ra our racism is in our DNA. So it can be a choice, just like the liberals insist that homosexuality is not a lifestyle choice, that they're born that way. So therefore, if you're racist, you're born that way, and it's not your fault. Charlotte. I love you <laughs> in a non-sexual way. This is maybe one of the greatest calls of all time. This oh. is the ultimate checkmate. You have now used the dear leader, Obama, the man who they worship, and you've taken his own words 
and now you're using it against them. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Charlotte, I salute you. Thank okay. you for that call. Check, mate. Game, set, match. It's over. The fat lady is singing. Eddie and Quincy, go Hey, to all the libs, it's not our fault. We can't help it. The dear leader said so. Eddie and Quincy, you're up next. Go ahead, Eddie. Eddie. Okay, let's see if we can get Eddie. Uh, Elise in Sharon. Elise, thank you for holding and welcome. Thank you, Jeff, and thank God for your show. Thank you, Elise. I Oh, I agree with every single thing you've said today on most days, every day. Uh, Jeff, I just wanted to make a couple of points about the show itself. Sure. To, just to prove these moon bats are crazy and mentally deranged. Roseanne <laughs> co-stars on that show, okay? One, her, her granddaughter, who played her granddaughter, is black on the show this year. Her son, DJ's wife, is black and also serving in Afghanistan on the show. Her daughter, who plays Darlene, is a lesbian woman married to a woman in real life. Does that sound like a racist to you? No. No. Racist. I mean, at least it's so obvious. She's oh not. And you know, Elise, when she voted for Obama, they loved her, Elise. Now oh. she voted for Trump yeah. and just, she's KKK, Elise. She's KKK. She the liberals had her in this show in the crosshairs just waiting for her to mess up. Elise, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you very much for that call. Okay, my friends, coming up next, Elizabeth Warren. You are not going to believe what she said. Did she just politically shoot herself in the foot? That story, but first... President Trump says he's ready to make a big announcement on health care in the coming weeks. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. Take it away, Evan.